the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point Northern Aquaculture Demonstration Facility introduces the Walleye Video Manual, a series of instructional videos on intensive culture. Video 3, Egg Incubation Techniques. After eggs are fertilized and water hardened, they are fully rinsed with fresh tempered water to remove the clay. Any dead eggs which are buoyant and white in color can also be removed at this time by simply pouring them out carefully. Eggs can be disinfected with 100 parts per million iodine for 15 minutes and rinsed with fresh tempered water. The total volume of eggs can be determined at this time, which will be used to calculate total egg numbers utilizing a method known as volumetric displacement. This method involves filling a large graduated cylinder with water about halfway to a known volume. The eggs are strained and funneled into the graduated cylinder of water. Make sure that all the eggs placed into the cylinder are submerged in water. This may have to be done several times depending on how many eggs that are being quantified. The change in volume of water will equal the total volume of eggs measured. Later in this video, we will discuss how to determine total numbers of eggs utilizing this information. It is also a good idea to mark a volumetric measurement on the bell jars before use in order to determine an approximate total volume of eggs at any time during incubation. At UWSP NADF, walleye eggs are incubated in a bell jar incubation system which offers aerated and degassed well water at appropriate temperatures ranging from 46 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. The eggs are slowly poured with water into the McDonald's style jar. Typically, three to four liters of eggs or less are added to each jar. The bell jar is added to the incubation system. Fresh, aerated water from the system's head tank flows into the individual jars via small ball valve and flexible tubing. The inflow is set to have good rolling movement of the eggs by adjusting the ball valve. The inflow is based on the number of eggs in the jar as well as the developmental stage, generally increasing flow towards the hatching stage. This can vary from 3.8 to 5.7 liters per minute to ensure a continuous but gentle egg rolling movement within the jar. The key aspect of the bell jar is that the inflow of water travels down a tube to a parabolic bottom, which creates an upwelling that gently rolls and suspends the eggs, allowing each egg exposure to fresh water and oxygen. A screen is securely placed at the top of the bell jar to hold the eggs in until hatch. Now that the eggs are safely incubating, total egg numbers can be determined. A common methodology used is volumetric displacement, using the total volume of eggs discussed earlier. First, obtain a small graduated cylinder. A 10 milliliter cylinder works well. Add a known volume of water to the cylinder to an exact milliliter. In this example, we will fill the cylinder to three milliliters. Remove a small amount of eggs, about a tablespoon, from the bell jar and place in a petri dish. Eggs should be separated from excess water using paper towel or an eyedropper. Gently begin adding eggs to the water in your cylinder. Do not pop the eggs during this process. Add enough eggs to raise the water level by one milliliter. In our example, we added enough eggs to raise the water level from three to four milliliters. Next, pour the eggs and water from the cylinder into an empty petri dish. You may need to rinse out the cylinder to get all the eggs out. Count the amount of eggs it took to raise one milliliter of water. Repeat this two more times to get an average. This average count is the number of eggs per milliliter. Using this number and our total egg volume determined earlier, we can calculate total numbers of eggs using the following equation. First, multiply the number of eggs per milliliter by a thousand to get number of eggs per liter. Next, take the number of eggs per liter and multiply by the total liters of eggs. This will equal the total number of eggs. For example, say we counted an average of 120 eggs per milliliter. Multiply this by 1,000 to equal 120,000 eggs per liter. If our total volume of eggs was 3 liters, determined earlier by volumetric displacement, 3 liters multiplied by 120,000 eggs per liter 
gives us 360,000 total number of eggs in the bell jar. Egg fertilization can be observed in as little as a few hours post-fertilization, but becomes very evident after 24 hours utilizing a microscope. In fertilized eggs, cell division begins to occur, creating what looks like a cap at one side of the egg. Walleyes have around 312 total temperature units in water temperatures ranging from 40 to 56 degrees Fahrenheit. These units will determine their hatch date. Temperature units equal the incubation water temperature in degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 multiplied by the number of days incubated. Using this idea, we can manage the hatch date of walleye by slowly increasing water temperature to hatch them out earlier or decreasing the water temperature to hold them longer. Although the safe range to hatch walleye is from 10 to 26 days in temperatures ranging from 40 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit without complications. Going out of this range may lead to poor hatching success. Throughout the incubation stage, dead eggs must be removed from the bell jars frequently. Dead eggs lead to increased fungal growth within the jar and can cause additional egg mortality. Dead eggs can be removed through a siphon. A plexiglass tube around a half inch in diameter with a length of flexible tubing works well for this. Water flow into the bell jar should be left on during this task. Dead eggs are white in color and more buoyant than live eggs. Therefore, they collect atop live eggs and can be easily siphoned off and collected in a container. The siphon tip should be kept a few centimeters above the layer of dead eggs. When the siphon is running, it will quickly lift the eggs into the tube. Keeping your thumb over the end of the tube is helpful to control starting and stopping the siphoning action. Another good protocol during incubation is to proactively treat eggs. One treatment option is utilizing a formalin drip treatment into the incubation system head tank to prevent fungus. This can be done every few days as a proactive treatment or daily if fungus issues arise. It is recommended to treat formalin at a concentration of 1,000 to 1,667 parts per million of flow for a 15-minute exposure of flow-through treatment. Treatment can begin at any stage but must cease near hatching. More details on egg treatments can be found in the manual. There are various stages of a developing walleye embryo. The eggs shown here were incubated at temperatures beginning at 46 degrees and slowly rising to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, hatching out eggs in 11 to 13 days. In the first stage, around 24 hours post-fertilization, a cell cap develops shown in the lower right corner of the egg. Most of the egg consists of yolk and a centrally located oil droplet, shown in yellow. After several days post-fertilization, the cell cap continues to grow as cell division occurs. At about three to four days post-fertilization, the developing embryo is wrapping around the yolk and oil droplet. The head and eyes become distinguishable, shown at the top of the yolk sac. Around seven days post-fertilization, the chromatophores, which look like small X's, begin to appear on the yolk sac. At 11 days post-fertilization, the eyes of the fish are becoming dark and can be seen with a naked eye. This is referred to as the eye up stage. At 13 days post-fertilization, the walleye are getting ready to hatch. At this stage, any formalin treatments must stop to not harm the developing walleye. Eggs become very dark black colored and much movement is happening inside the egg. This stage is referred to as hard-eyed and hatching will begin to occur in the following days. To determine an approximate hatching success, total volume of eyed eggs can now be extrapolated from the bell jar markings. To do this, the inflow of water can be turned off for several minutes to let the eggs settle. Total egg volume can be extrapolated from the markings. It is recommended to recalculate number of eggs per milliliter, as discussed earlier, to determine total egg numbers at this stage. This concludes the video tutorial on egg incubation techniques. Continue to the next video on early life stage rearing techniques and systems.